What is up, Jim Groom? How the hell are you, Tim Owens? Wait a second. Are you over in the arcade? That's crazy. Yeah, I <laughs> I did some time travel did you? and space travel. <laughs> in fact, I was supposed to be back in the arcade today or know. someday soon, but uh, yeah. we will rectify that. Uh, but no, I just have a really bitchin' green screen with a nice background of the arcade that you so... So how would I say, so generously took a shot of, so thank you. No, no problem. Uh, it's it's interesting to me how, you know, there's a lot of the virtual background stuff in Zoom and others where they'll try to fake it just based on what's moving and what's not behind you. But it's like, once you put an actual green screen there, it's like you can really dial it in in yeah, a way where it exactly. looks very realistic. And I've been trying to find like images and like just slightly blurring them to the point where it does look like it's behind you. Cause that's one thing too, where you can have a green screen, but then it can look pretty fake if everything is in focus. It doesn't really look like you're in a room, but that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I like that you captured the gauntlet because it almost looks like I'm up against the gauntlet and it gives it some perspective. So yeah. I like that. <laughs> that's cool. I'm just playing around with um, some shots that I can change in here on my stream deck, my Elgato stream deck. Let's talk a little bit about that because after we talked before the show, you know, the show before the show, uh, you would tell me some of the things you can do with the Elgato stream deck, which quickly prompted me to buy one <laughs> for my office away from home here. Uh, so um, what is the stream deck all about? Why would someone want one? Well, the stream deck, um, so, well, there's a couple things that we've got going on here. So, you know, in previous conversations we've talked about, we've got the A10 Mini. Um, and so I've got a couple different things plugged in, including, seems like it's fallen asleep here. I'll see if I can turn it back on, but I've got a GoPro next to me just so that I can show what's going on in here. Um, I'll switch back to me full screen and then I'll switch over, turn this off and switch there. So that's the stream deck. Um, and that looks cool. It's cool, right? It's it's one LCD screen with buttons over top of it that kind of separate it out. This is the regular stream deck, and it's 15 buttons. Um, so you've got three three rows of five buttons in each row. But you can customize each individual button to do, God, just about everything in here. And I'm using, by Andy's recommendation, the software companion. Uh, Stream Deck comes with software that's pretty nice, but it's a little bit limited um, in terms of integrations. There are some software that works with it and some that doesn't, whereas Companion had more integrations. So I'm not using the Stream Deck software. I'm using Companion for this. And one of the things that they have in here is these pages. So this is page one. If I hit the up button here, it goes to page two. So you actually <laughs> don't, instead of, instead of 15 buttons, you have an unlimited number on, mul you have 15 buttons across multiple pages. And so of course you, you lose these, you know, left three buttons in order to do that. But then it gives you the flexibility to have whole different scenes of buttons that you might need for whatever you're showing in there, which I think is pretty cool. This page, so if I go back to the first one, then you can see, and I'll kind of pull it up a lot closer here. I've got cam one, cam two, cam three, cam four. These are all mapped to the A10 mini software. So if I switch here, that goes to the camera. Um, camera one, which is the Blackmagic camera there. Camera two is a Raspberry Pi, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Camera three is the GoPro. And camera four, I don't have turned on. Um, that is plugged into a VHS and Laserdisc player, a converter over there. So um, those are my four HDMI inputs. MP1 is the media player, and black is just black. You know, if I go, go there. Um, MP1 is that background that I have in there key puts me over top of it so there i am um, when i press that and i've got that set to toggle so if i just press it i'm on press it again i come off and are I'm those on. three keys a10 mini yes all they of are. this is yeah yeah and there are hardware buttons on the a10 mini you know if i had it up near my desk but what here's what's really cool about this in addition to that, with the software, you can have multiple key presses all combined into one button. So one and two down here 
are different shots. One is me turning my key on, making me full screen on here, and then putting the office background on me. So if I press that, it goes nice. to this, essentially this scene, kind of like an OBS, right? Two, I'm going to press right now, is going to put, I believe it's cam three. Yeah, the, the, in, the cam three input, which is the GoPro behind me, and it's going to move me down into the corner. So if I press that button, <laughs> and so that's, it's almost like building macros. You can have one, one button press that does multiple things at the same time. So you can get really flexible in that. Then if I go up to the next page here, this was an, another really intense thing. I was starting to figure out keyboard shortcuts. And I talked about this a little bit on a previous episode that StreamYard, which we're using for broadcasting, doesn't have keyboard shortcuts built in. I found a workaround. Um, it does require you to use, uh, I can't even remember the extension. I'd have to look it up. Um, but it's sort of like, you know, the old Grease Monkey thing back in the day where there's these JavaScripts. Um, totally. In fact, I could see it in here. Tamper Monkey is what it's called now. Uh, Tamper Monkey has these JavaScript. Um, files and somebody built one that basically mimics keyboard presses in StreamYard. And so I was able to modify that. And so I made a page in here that modifies the various um, layouts that you have in StreamYard. And instead of putting text here, I actually took screenshots of the various buttons in StreamYard. So it would look just <laughs> like it does up on the screen. So I've got the side by side view. If I press that button right here, now we're oh, side wow. by side in StreamYard. So cool. Isn't that crazy? Um, you know, and then if I go full screen again, that's the that's just my video in here. Um, I also have down at the bottom. I don't know if it, that's coming in here. It I is. Took, I took pictures of us on there. So <laughs> if I press your face, you go full screen. <laughs> just like for advertise. That's right. Um, so these actually work if I just. Um, I, even if I press yours again, it switches back to my video. Um, and again, I can go back here and switch back to me being full screen and have my office background behind me. That's so, so cool. I love just, that stuff. Yeah, there's just, I'm finding so much um, flexibility with what you can do with it, which is pretty wild. Uh, it does take a, a whole lot. I think you have to start from the standpoint of like, what am I trying to do? and then work backwards from that because you can basically do almost anything, you know, with the buttons and the configurations and the shortcuts, things that you don't even really think about like, oh, well, what if I wanted to now like open this application, mute my mic, turn this shot on, do that, like really stage out of like a multi-action sequence of things and you could do that. So, so uh, it's pretty wild. What is the software that you've basically replaced the Elgato software with? What is it called? It's called Companion. So Companion. it's made by a company called BitFocus. Um, and so Companion has just a bunch of different plugins. Anybody can write a plugin um, that integrates with it. And then you build out your button layouts in there. And so I found that, you know, Andy had mentioned it. And it turns out that's the way to get the A10 Mini to work with the Stream Deck. So I needed it anyway for that. It's it doesn't work in combination with the Stream Deck software. You can only have one open, so you're kind of all in with Companion. Um, but at the same time, you know, for what you lose from the Stream Deck software, you gain a lot more flexibility with stuff. So that's what I'm using right now. Um, if I go into it, I've got just two different integrations in there, the A10 Mini and something called, <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce this, Vicrio. Uh, it's actually looking for um, keyboard presses and mimicking them. So uh -huh. that's what I'm using for the hotkeys. So that's how I was able to say like, okay, um, when I press the number one, I want you to switch to the first layout in StreamYard. Uh, and it does that. So And that's and the got... grease monkey like script that's basically using accessibility calls to make that happen? 
That's right. So Grease Monkey is translating the number, the press, or whatever key press into whatever button on their layout you actually want it to be. So I went in there and said, number one is this layout, this button, press it. Number two is this button, press it. And then the Vicrio thing is translating a keyboard press from the actual button that you're pressing on Stream Deck. So it's two pieces of software working in combination. But that's pretty gigantic because you now were able, and I saw that just with that switch, you were able to have a one button switch in StreamYard, which it didn't have, which was one of its drawbacks, but you kind of hacked around that to make StreamYard really work for you. That's awesome. Yeah. It makes it makes a big difference because, you know, like you can see, you're able to switch without having to like navigate a mouse and click certain buttons yeah, and you're looking exactly. away and you're looking down and that kind of thing. You know, I can actually just keep my hand down here and I, I can press things and I kind of know where things are and you start to get that muscle memory on which buttons go towards which things and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty cool. I, I mean, you know, adding the images was fun, but I'm not even looking at it for the most part. It's, <laughs> it's the ability to quickly glance down there, which is why for some of them, I'll just put like numbers like one, two, three, and four or something, because once you start dialing in, you know, which numbers go to which stuff, you know, you can... It's almost like a, a phone there. keypad, right? Like boop, 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 boop. Like you know yeah. which way to go and you kind of remember the the number just by where the buttons are. Exactly, yeah. So, so cool. I love yeah, it. It's, a, it's pretty cool. I've, I've been pretty excited about it. Um, I just figured out all the key presses in StreamYard and stuff. I really do hope that they'll add in real keyboard shortcuts in there. That would kind of cut out the whole Grease Monkey script thing because that was like actually having to do some coding. And I'll put... I'll put links in associated with this episode for people who do want to go down that road. Um, it's that's probably a pretty niche thing, but at the same time, you never know. Um, but at the same time, it would be nice if they just supported keyboard shortcuts, and then you could take out the Grease Monkey script. It'd be nice if Companion just did keyboard presses without having to have a separate <laughs> listener software running on the computer to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I got it to work, which is kind of cool. So. It is awesome. And hey, I wanted to just let you know that you that wasn't the oh well, I'm not letting you know this. You already know this. That's not the only hacking around you did, right? Like you also were able, if I'm right, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, to get that whole uh to get the Raspberry Pi A10 bridge idea working is that correct oh yeah and we yeah. might want to describe what this is because obviously i'm already speaking in tongues right now but like <laughs> we saw this thing by aaron parecki on his youtube channel and eric um who commented on one of my posts actually pointed me to it and i think you had already been watching it and i think the short version of it and you can clarify is he wanted a way for one 810 mini pro so one of these kind of devices that, that handles many inputs and allows you to switch quickly before between them to actually broadcast to another um, device or another, a bridge to another A10 Mini Pro. And given he couldn't wait, he actually created his own kind of almost receiver using a Raspberry Pi. Is that fair in my description? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the idea behind it, you know, um, and like almost everything else we're doing in here, Andy, I think mentioned it briefly on our on our call, which was easy yeah. to miss, was the idea behind it is that you've got a box, you're streaming to that box, and it's converting it to an HDMI signal that you can then put into another switcher or something. Um, you know, some people will use it within the same office building to be able to stream from one room, but to have all the equipment and everything to push that out to some larger producer area in another room, for example, without having to run long wires for every piece of equipment. So uh, that's the idea behind this, what they call the streaming bridge. Um, but this is a Raspberry Pi. I actually um, moved the GoPro down here so that oh, people cool. can see. I'll come over. I don't have the, the microphones closer to my desk, but this is the Raspberry Pi here. It's plugged into, this is my, um, it's a wireless router, but it's got ethernet ports on the back. So it, that's, we don't have network in this room. So this is our workaround. I'm able to plug in everything that I need into the back of this wireless router. And then it acts as if it's, you know, plugged into a hardwired network connection. This is power and this is HDMI. So HDMI 
is coming in to the uh, ATEM Mini here. So let me move this over here. Input two. If I press that, no, oh, switch to you. Yeah, oh. but it's right because I'm connected. <laughs> It is. Okay. I was like, why is it doing that? You're streaming to it right now, aren't you? And I'm probably working on a 10 second delay. Yeah. I'm streaming yeah. to the, do you want me to stop streaming to it? But I am yeah. streaming to that device. That's super cool. Yeah. Stop streaming for a second. Yeah. And, but yeah, it's good because you're seeing the green screen there. Whereas in StreamYard, you were using the green screen effect, which is interesting too. Exactly. So, um <laughs> that's awesome i love it so who is this who is this guy yeah so it's frozen but now it went back to the raspberry pi's home page which you can see is just command line and there's no desktop running on there or anything like that um yeah that's so cool i love yeah. and that's a raspberry pi 4 and aaron parecki's video which is on youtube which we'll link to was really clear in how to get this thing it's pretty brilliant what he did um yeah and then and it's, it's great. It's interesting in terms of flexibility because, you know, since it's an open streaming thing, you could give access to anybody. So I'll start streaming there and this should flip over and you'll see a different view of me. Yeah, there I am. And so, so you get cool. sort of, this is just, yeah, I, I didn't do anything in here, but I just opened up OBS and started the stream. Now, this is a lot faster. There's very little latency that's because it's on the same network. So that's the difference. You're coming, you're sending a stream high definition from Italy to us versus me sending a high definition stream right over the local network to the Raspberry Pi. So yeah. there's a little bit of a delay there, um, but it's like, what, three seconds maybe, if that, so. If I went on the network there, if I actually got on through a VPN and it saw me as a network, it would still be delayed, right? I would think so um yeah that's interesting i hadn't really thought about that um i was we've done that for other projects <laughs> right yeah with the vpn so yeah. i i think it would still have to be delayed because at yeah, the end of the exactly. day you're you're sending you know high definition you know frames across a network um from italy so but i think about it in terms of stuff like if you wanted me to be producing something, but I wanted you to be playing uh, Pac-Man or whatever games from your system. And so you're streaming that game out. I'm receiving that signal in here uh, and I'm able to do stuff with it. I don't think it works well for conversation because it is like 10, 10 seconds or more in terms of a delay. So I don't think you could have a back and forth in, in, in that sense. But I think if you were playing a game or something, I could have your audio and everything else coming in through another stream, but then you could have high quality video coming exactly. directly. Yeah. I mean, I think if we go back to the Raspberry Pi and you disconnect your stream and I reconnect mine, you can see like I'm connecting to the Raspberry Pi in <laughs> Reclaim Hosting headquarters from Italy and it's basically right. HD. So I'm frozen, but okay, now it's yeah. open. So, so you should I'll be try. able to stream there. I'll try. Let's see that. I love this stuff so much. Yeah. And since <laughs> Crazy. I'm, isn't that wild? That's can, so cool. So that your stream is large here, and I've got your actual video from StreamYard smaller in that in that layout. But essentially, it's both of us, right? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I just love it. Like I could like, woo, woo, and then. Ten seconds later, look at my myself in Fredericksburg, Virginia, do the same thing. Oh, I could do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's I love that, and I think the the possibilities and applications um, are super cool. Not only locally, but even like you said, if I wanted to take advantage of some of the stuff you have um, at your dis at your disposal in the headquarters that might be a good way to do it yeah it's it's been really cool to start dialing in some things i mean i got this um uh, i'll switch back to the gopro and give you just a very quick tour here yeah um, i'd love to see it if i can turn the gopro back on i've got to figure out why the gopro falls asleep for whatever reason but there we go so uh, i'll turn my key off and switch over to that loading 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 um 
This is not an advertisement for GoPro. No, it's not <laughs> at all. But so a couple things. Uh, Andy had mentioned the Luna display, which is what I'm using in the teleprompter. So I can look right at the screen and be looking into the camera, but talking to you. So the Luna display is plugged into the Mac mini that we're streaming out with. And then it's using teleprompter mode so that, you know, cause I've got it on the TV, but I'd rather look right into the camera, right? So it's doing all of that for me. Um, but we got this like rack mounted system. It didn't cost that much money. And that allowed us to just start cleaning up some of the wires and things. So we've got uh, LaserDisc VHS, um, the, <laughs> la the VHS converter over there. The it's Mac so mini good. is there. Um, this is a headphone transmitter, a wireless audio transmitter that I've been playing around with. And then I've got some stuff on top still, the ATEM, the Raspberry Pi, the wireless router, and that kind of stuff. So, so good. that all just sits there, but, you know, having stuff directly on the desk. And I've got this standing desk over here that I can use and raise and lower, whatever the case may be. And then now with that close enough, I can get the Stream Deck right up here on the desk, which is nice. It's really clean, actually. Yeah, it's it's worked out really nice. And, you know, I've got one HDMI cable running back to that TV back there as a confidence monitor. But then with the teleprompter, I can actually look directly into the camera as well. So. Yeah. And that really that it goes on, that goes the extra mile because it always looks like you're engaged with the people who are on stream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice. I mean, for me talking to you, it's quite nice. So thank you. <laughs> you're quite welcome yeah and yeah. it's cool too because oh i and i forgot to mention now that we've got the a10 mini pro we've got the multi-monitor oh yeah thing. let's see that that's super so, cool uh, switch over there and turn my key off again so the the idea behind this is that the hdmi out from the a10 mini is showing you all four inputs at the same time as well as a preview and a program of exactly what's going out. So I know you're seeing the GoPro because the program is showing that. Um, and so, you know, it allows you to, you know, when you're switching between the buttons, it's highlighting those. You can see the audio levels down there. Oh, so I know nice. how loud I am and how, how well it's picking up. I'm not using the audio from the GoPro. So even though it's picking it up with the, built-in mic I, it's not turned on so it's grayed out in there if we were streaming directly to ds106 tv or to youtube or facebook this would be showing up there i can see what image i've got stored on there so it's just a nice little confidence that shows you all the various inputs that you've got plugged in which is super nice yeah that's awesome and i remember when andy was doing the open va andy rush who in many ways inspired a lot of this was doing the open va uh, you know, recording. And I don't know if we streamed that out. We might have, but he had that kind of multi view uh, monitor with all yeah. the different shots. And it was really impressive. I mean, he's been doing this forever. He must be in his heyday right now. Cause like all this stuff has come to a, to a point where all that knowledge, it's like to have that after all these years of work, you're kind of like invaluable. And I don't have right now, I just have it set when I press a button, it goes live on certain things, but you can, that's where the preview comes in. If you have it set that way, you can start building a shot and before you push it out to what goes out. Um, yeah. I'm, I don't have that set up right now. And because a lot of times I'll forget to hit program and actually get it to send out to the stream. It, it's, it's more than my mind tends to work with sometimes. But it's super cool, even like with this, like when I make you full screen, then I'm able to jump out of the camera and quickly set up the next exactly. shot. Exactly. People don't necessarily know that that's happening, you know, and so it's pretty cool to just switch over to there. And then I might go down here, switch to the GoPro, turn off my key and then come back here. And now, you know, I we're switched to that shot, but you didn't see me like scrambling and, you know, doing all of that kind of stuff, you know, uh, in front of the camera, which I think is cool, too. I think, and in some ways, it's those small things that make it cleaner mm -hmm. and make the whole process seem a little bit more cohesive. You know, yeah. there's still so much going on, and you brought up the point, and I think it's right. You know, you almost need someone on the back end managing the shots 
and yeah. like, you know, giving you, but you know, who has someone hanging around who like, Hey, I'm going to be streaming for an hour and a half. Can you like, you know, so you got to figure out a workaround. In the, in the age of coronavirus, I'm not sure anybody <laughs> has a, a group of people producing their stuff. It's kind of yeah. all on your own. But I think that's where the macros come in, too. Like the ability to like build out multiple things to happen at the same time. You can save yourself from I've got to click this. I've got to do that. I've got to do that. If I just know on page one, when I hit the number one, I'm going to come to the view that I want for when I'm talking. And then if I hit number two, I'm going to switch over, you know. I'm going to switch over to the GoPro with me down in the corner and that kind of thing. And I could even tie that into StreamYard and say, I know if I hit this button, it's going to do all that. And it's going to make me full screen versus side by side like this. So I think if you, so if you know where you're going with that stuff, you can build out the shortcuts and things to do it. So it's pretty sweet. Well, that's, I mean, that's awesome. Between, you know, getting the shortcut keys locked in for StreamYard and then playing around with the stream deck as a result, right? The two are related. And then just the bridge. I, I mean, I love the Raspberry Pi bridge just because it proves just how unbelievable the Raspberry Pi as a tool can be for small dedicated projects where a $50 computer really allows you so much power. Like you were saying, the new Raspberry Pi 4 has like two HDMI inputs so you can have like micro, so you can have dual monitors. It has like outputs. It has, it's amazing like it's what insane. it can do. And they haven't raised the price on it. Like it's still like 35 bucks for just the circuit board. And then I ended up spending 10 bucks to buy a plastic case. I could have 3D printed one here too, but I mean, it, it's dirt cheap. And of course you've got to buy the accessories like a keyboard or mouse or whatever to plug in and those kind of things. Um, but at the same time, it, it's incredible to me what you can do with that. It's cool. Yeah, and I love it when people take advantage of that and build these cool projects. Like, you know, hats off to Aaron Parecki for doing that and showing the value. But also, I like his videos too because they're a demonstration of how to do an instructional video and how to really dial in, like stopping, keep keeping mind of pacing, showing people the code. Like, even if you've never used a Raspberry Pi or coded through command line, his videos, I think, just about anyone with a little bit of patience could do. Yeah, and my next, so so where I wanna go next is uh, instead of using StreamYard, I wanna use OBS, but I wanna bring in your video feed as a separate source that I can then make my own layouts with. I love StreamYard, there's quite a bit here, but there are some limitations in terms of designs, yeah. in terms of shots and things like that. And of course the whole keyboard workaround thing, whereas with OBS, there's a module for a companion. I can just do OBS directly in there. Um, I, I think that could be pretty cool too. Uh, and two things that I've been looking at with that are obs.ninja. It's a website that allows you to connect to a, um, a WebRTC group, similar to like Whereby or you know Jitsi, several other video conferencing software. It's very basic conferencing software on the web, but each individual person that joins, in addition to the chat that you're in and the video chat, and you can all talk to each other, you can grab each person's feed as a separate thing that feeds into OBS. And I think that's oh, where wow. you could actually mix and set up your layouts and things in OBS, and that's what you're broadcasting with. And you're just using the website, obs.ninja, to have your conversation. So um, that's one thing I want to play around with. The other one is Skype supports something called NDI. Have you ever heard of it? No. NDI, uh, it's from a company called New Tech, and it's basically a way to get a direct video feed from other software, and Skype supports it so that you can, in OBS, if you've got Skype open and you're on a call, and you say, I want to add an NDI source, and it's like, okay, you've got Skype open with Jim and Lauren. Do you want each of them as separate sources? And you say, okay, yeah, absolutely. And now you've got a direct capture of their video alone. So they add their own logo in there, which is kind of a pain, but at the same time, that's pretty powerful too. Cause any Skype call then each person with their own separate audio and video is coming in as separate sources that you can mix and match in OBS without a hardware switcher. Wow. So, yeah. And that's, that would be okay. So those are two good episodes to follow up on the OBS Ninja and the one with uh, NTI. I had not heard of NTI, but that's pretty slick. Or at least uh, it sounds D is, so. D is in dog. 
Yeah. NDI. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm trying to look up exactly what it stands for. I know it's from a company called New Tech, so I'm sure that's probably what it's related to. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm I'm fairly new to that as well. Uh, but I found out about it. I'm like, what is NDI? I don't understand. And I started looking at it. I'm like, ooh, that's pretty powerful. Um, so, yeah. Cool stuff. As usual, that. Tim, you are a wealth of information. I just put in three new pins in my pin board. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got OBS <laughs> Ninja. I got Companion. Nice. I do like yeah. pin board, yeah. And um, the new tech, um, what is it? It's the OBS NDI, new tech NDI integration into OBS. So, yeah. Right. Super slick. And I did the whole one, the virtual cam for the Mac today with OBS. So I'm I'm feeling the love right now. So thank you. That's right. The virtual cam lets you do anything in OBS and then it shows up as a webcam in the software. So I guess you can do that for um, a Zoom call or for, you know, whatever it be, Google Meet, whatever. Um, it just shows up as a webcam input and then you can set up all your shots and do that, which I think is pretty cool, too. Which we have something we have something cooking up for that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we'll see if that works. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, awesome, dude. This is this is fun, and you know the the studio continues to improve. And you know, I love playing with this stuff. To me, this is the this is the kind of incubator stuff I want to be doing, and it, it's it's the perfect time to do it. You know, like yeah. in a in a, a wor in a world, right? In a world, <laughs> in a world <laughs> where everybody is isolated, and you must connect by video. <laughs> Reach out and touch someone. That's but right. I have one thing to say on that. Andy Rush, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically uh, like I'm picking apart the first video and stealing every single thing he mentioned. So, you know, it's fair game. Awesome. <laughs> uh, it's the ultimate form of flattery, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and, you know, who knows that somebody else might might benefit from it as well. So Great. Yeah, I well, agree. Awesome, dude. I enjoy having these episodes. We can keep keep track of the developments on this over time. And so the next one, I think we should do it in OBS instead of StreamYard and see what we could really accomplish in there, like that. bringing in your video and doing some other things, maybe bringing Lauren or someone else into Meredith, uh, Katie, whatever the case may be into sure. it and start like really mixing up a, an interesting podcast episode in there. I love it. That sounds great. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for this episode, everybody. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Smash that button. <laughs>